Today's discussion will be presented in three sections since we are recording the session for our radio broadcast on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. Feel free to post questions and comments during the session and we'll try to get them answered online. We are particularly pleased to welcome our moderator, Jason Miller, Executive Editor at Federal News Radio 1500 AM. Let me turn over the reins to Jason to begin today's discussion. Welcome to our panel discussion today. This should be actually a great conversation about how federal agencies are using open source software to modernize their applications in the cloud. My guests today are Frank Knechny, the Chief Technology Officer in the Air Force's Office of Information Dominance and Chief Information Officer, Daniel Massey, a Program Manager in the Cybersecurity Division of the Homeland Security Department's Science and Technology Directorate, and Joel Jackson, the Director of Middleware and Cloud Sales at Red Hat Federal. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we get started, let me set some context to our discussion. And I think this discussion actually may just break some new ground. And that I am doubly excited for. As I did some research today, I found little open source discussion, especially when it relates to apps rationalization in the cloud. There's plenty about apps rationalization when I hit the old Google, but when you add the open source piece to it, there's just not a lot out there. So I think in many ways this is a little scary, but also I think we're going to break some new path in a, in a pretty thick, unexplored technology jungle. So what goes into apps rationalization in the cloud? Well, every CIO I speak with tells me and says, well, we're doing apps rationalization. The cloud's helping us do that. We got to get do that got to get to the apps rationalization before we can move to the cloud well I, I so we have to figure out okay what does that actually mean well Phil Murphy of Forrester research says agencies are rationalizing apps due to two forces legacy apps that need updating and fundamental business changes he says legacy apps are holding organizations back while businesses want to move forward now Murphy also says apps rationalization is one way to clean house, so to speak, but let also innovation happen more quickly and easily. I just want to highlight a few other key points that Murphy pointed out in regards to apps rationalization. First, it is a technology problem, but, and this is a big but, an organization's actions need to be driven by the business needs. He says when agencies or companies collect details about the current state of their apps, they have to begin with the technology, but end with the value that apps brings to the mission. Murphy says, here's some, some basic questions everyone should ask. Which functions does the app support? How important is that function compared to others? What shape is the app in? Is it old? Is it new? Does it need to be updated? And what are the organization's top priorities in which, and how do those apps fit into those top priorities? So with all that being said, let's go right to our panel, try to answer some of those questions and more. Once again, my guests today are Frank Konechny, the Chief Technology Officer in the Air Force's Office of Information Dominance and Chief Information Officer, Daniel Massey, a Program Manager in the Cybersecurity Division of the Homeland Security Department's Science and Technology Directorate, and Joel Jackson, Director of Middleware and Cloud Sales at Red Hat Federal. I'm going to turn to Frank, actually, on this one and start on the other end of the table for those uh, watching the webinar. Cloud, apps rationalization, platform as a service, middleware. Give me a sense, where does that all fit in with the Air Force in terms of where you guys are heading? The, the Air Force is going down the apps rationalization, and we've organized ourselves in such a way that we're looking at it from a mission area viewpoint. So we have established mission area managers or integrators that are supposed to look across the board for all applications that may have to be rationalized. Rationalization means, of course, you may get rid of that app, or you may merge it with other apps, or you may just uh, modernize it. And the, the issue becomes, you have to, as you said, you have to look at what mission the app is actually uh, being used for. And we do that by mapping against the enterprise architecture that has all the mission statements in it. And so one of the big issues, of course, is that you have to be able to do an inventory of all the apps and doing all the assets where all the apps are on. In the Air Force, we have about, oh, 5,000 apps. So it's not like a trivial little issue. Also, we have multiple apps at various bases, the same app at different bases and different hardware. And so as we progress down this path, we look at it from a viewpoint of what do we have to do to categorize those apps. And yes, we categorize it by, you know, is it Java-based? Is it unknown-based? You know, what, how, how old is it? And then we determine based upon uh, all that, should we actually modernize it? And part of that is, of course, the platform as a service piece. Frank, let me just one quick follow-up. When you talk about having mission area view, viewpoint and mission area managers, how many managers are we talking about? Because the Air Force, the, your missions are so huge. Well, there's, there's really only four mission areas. Okay. It seems so much more. Well, there's a lot in each, each mission area. <laughs> right. There's, you know, 700 apps in each mission area, roughly. Because mission areas are business, uh, 
warfighter, uh, enterprise, and uh, intelligence. And so in each of those areas, there is uh, enough people to actually monitor the work. And there's PEOs, there's portfolio managers, there's a whole slew of people actually working on it. And so the issue becomes, and we do this, we always get stuck with the question, how many duplicative apps do you have in your portfolio? And that's really very difficult to figure out unless you've done the inventory and done the analysis to determine what mission functions each of those apps actually supports. Let me turn to Joel Jackson from Red Hat. One of the things about what Frank was saying, which I think is fascinating, is the inventory piece and then looking at the mission area piece. Talk a little bit about what you're seeing from your customers and as, as Red Hat is working with the federal agencies. I think Frank hit on, hit on it pretty well right there. It, you, we have customers that are looking for how do you build the new applications today, and then how do you also deal with the legacy, which is probably 80, 90 percent of the budget still today. So from that perspective, uh, most of our most of the customers that we see are looking how do you refa refactor that application on a on a uh, cheaper platform so that might be moving from a proprietary uh, software base to an open source proprietary base uh, and then on the on the new side um, we see a lot of customers putting down a platform as a service and kind of drawing that line in the sand saying our new application development we're going to write on this platform as a service because of the inherent benefits and scale out architectures that we can use that in that model. And then on the legacy side, just trying to get that application as cheap to run as, as, as humanly possible. And obviously killing uh, applications or, or removing them from the portfolio is, a, is, is something we see too. Because if you're just building new, applic new applications and never retiring any, that's, you, you're kind of getting to a, the same path we are today. Are you finding that agencies as they're moving towards the platform as a service and looking at new development and then they're looking at their legacy apps that there is that give and take happening where they're getting rid of some of the older ones saying we're going to just turn that one off because it's either a too old or it's irrelevant to our business needs i, I think the first thing that our customers are, are they're moving the, their apps to the cloud the first ones are the ones that they don't have to do anything to can i just move this to a you know, an unclassified public cloud or a gov cloud situation, for example, uh, and then yes, we're they're 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 trying to figure out how do we do this. Uh, and, and the other thing that's interesting about platform as a service is that's the first time in a long time for 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 myself where app development and operations are in the same room talking about how to deliver applications that never really used to happen uh, in the legacy market. So. Um, yeah, I, I do think the, the bridge between legacy and, and platform as a service is, 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 is an interesting interesting dynamic and an interesting way to look at it from a technology perspective. I think that's fascinating when you when you talk about development and ops in the same room. You're right. I don't know if that happens too often. Frank's nodding his head saying, yes, it doesn't happen enough. Yeah. <laughs> and Daniel Massey from Homeland Security, let's talk about what you guys are doing at Science and Technology Directorate. Sure. So I want to kind of touch on a few. I agree with all the points made so far, right? Uh, we'd add to that that this inventory while you're trying to to track it is changing, right? The mission is changing. And uh, we're coming from the cybersecurity uh, perspective, right? So that, that's adding yet another twist as to, you know, not only do I want to get this old app off of my, you know, off because it's no longer in use, it's consuming resources, but it, it may be posing a security risk that uh, I don't need. I need to keep it up to date. I need to make sure that I'm, I'm doing the appropriate for security for it. And, uh, and one of the things that we really are advocating in terms of the open source approach is an ability to sort of have a lot of flexibility for adapting the app, adapting to changes in mission, especially from our perspective, adapting to changes in uh, security threats and, and issues like that. And, and to have that adaptability is, is essential moving forward. I mean, I think that's critical. Joel. Yeah, I, one of the common... Uh, misperceptions I hear about cloud from customers is that they're enamored by the scale of it, right, you know, spinning up hundreds of thousands of VMs real quickly. But you're hitting on a, a, a subject in federal that I think is very relevant that I think the agility part of cloud is going to be arguably the most important piece uh, to federal agencies. Scale is going to be important, but the fact that you can move quicker is going to be, uh, is going to make agencies more dynamic. And let me turn back to Daniel just on that note. When you talk about open source and cloud, what are we talking about now? Are we talking about because one of the things, part of this conversation is when we get into the middleware discussion of where does middleware fit in. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that applies to where you're sitting, but, but just give me a little bit more about open source cloud and, and, and the agility that it brings when it comes to apps, apps rationalization. Just to set the stage nicely here, so I'm, you know, in in the science and technology director, we're we're here supporting the mission. We're doing more, uh, you know, R and D, uh, near term R and D. So uh, you know, helping complement some of the operational stuff going on. Uh, 
in terms of that, agility is crucial, right? And and if you come in and you say, I'm going to, I need an app to do X, Y, Z, uh, you know, you go through the process, you know, you, you get it through all the various hurdles, you get thinking out, it's it's no longer X, Y, Z by the time you get that done. It's now, you know, X prime, Y may be gone, uh, you know, Z may be survived. Plus, you know, if you see all the issues happening from, you know, all the various security, security issues, both open source and not, right, you have, uh, you really have to be able to adapt, and and our focus is on helping people do that adaption, uh, adaptation, right? And uh, we are we're putting a lot of uh, R and D resources into promoting uh, open source solutions uh, because we feel that's very it's cost effective, it's the the adaptability, and um, at some point I'd like to get into a little bit about the security trade offs there with open source versus proprietary, and I think there's some interesting room for debate, but uh, we're, we're we're good proponents of open source. Well, we jumped into security quickly, so, so yeah, should, exactly. should we go down that path? Because as soon as you brought up the idea of agility and then be able to, to decide what threats are in front of you and how to adjust those, to those threats. F Frank, you were nodding a little bit of your head as well during what Daniel was saying about the agility and security. Just give me a sense from the Air Force perspective. The security is a big issue, obviously, especially for, for DOD. And even though we have some open source, it always has to be STIG or you know security approved before it actually gets onto the network. And so there's a big concern that there's always a big concern in open source that there's there's some vulnerabilities. There could be vulnerabilities in it depending on where it comes from and who has been working with it. So we we do both in both. In fact, the Air Force has established uh, three platforms as a service on the Java side and one on the .NET side as the standard is going forward with for all new and modernized applications. And at the same time, we're trying to figure out exactly what performance characteristics these platforms have so that when we do you know, migrate applications, we can say, oh, this app needs to be on this platform for these reasons, as opposed to, to not having a real rationalization for that. So we're, we're concerned with security all the time. In fact, we're paranoid with security. And some, some of the platforms that we have actually have the security pieces in it, which you could say is middleware, but it's, it's more of attachments as opposed to middleware. I'm just going to take us just a second off topic, so put up with me. When you say you had three platforms on Java and one on .NET, how did, how, how did that decision get made? Was it just based on what, what your no, current we've architecture? Been, we've been working on it for a while. Uh, we came across this two, three years ago. In fact, we talked to Joel about it <laughs> way back when. And uh, we, had the, we, we know, based upon experience that we have at Hill Air Force Base, that we've already rationalized like 400, 500 apps there that the, the way to do this was to standardize on a set of platforms. And the reason why is the obvious, two reasons. Uh, licensing is easier and maintenance is much easier. In fact, we decreased the personnel staff significantly because it's the same platform across the board. And so you can patch it easier. And that's another reason for security. You want to be able to patch it quickly and patch it across the board. So those are the basic reasons why we find it better to go, do it that way. It's interesting when you talk about patching because that's one of the things you hear about when you get that standardization around platforms or technology and such. Where does middleware fit into all of this? Let me turn to Joel and because a lot of times you have that legacy, you have the new platform which you talked about. How to connect the two? Well, I th you know, middleware is still the core framework I think for building applications, whether you're doing it in a legacy environment or in a cloud environment. I think the newer middleware technologies are getting really good at abstracting. Um, the, that layer, so your legacy applications and um, your, your your newer cloud applications can basically talk together in a joint business uh, capability. So uh, the technologies are still going to be foundational, um, and then you, for, as an application owner, you've got to think about um, I'd say two other things. You know, the mobility part. You know, mobile applications are growing like like gangbusters, and with mobile apps now, you, you you could be touching you know the scale part of cloud. You, you just don't know how many people are going to actually use that. So I think uh, you know having an open source framework around that edge um, is going to be very helpful. Again, from the agility standpoint, you don't you don't get locked in, and it's a more modular approach. And then also empowering developers uh, is going to be a big part um, uh, on how middleware. Uh, gets treated in the legacy in the cloud environment. So you want to you want to be able to spin up stuff very quickly. You don't want to take six weeks for a VM, for example. You want to be able to get your developers uh, to get X Y Z out, like Daniel was saying, uh, way 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 faster than what the past is. No no more big bang a, a, big bang application. Well, that's been that's been yeah. the. Uh 
the truism that's been trying to push out from OMB, the White House, agile, agile, agile. Yeah. I think getting that, it sounds to me like, Joel, that if that middle world piece helps make that agility, we talk about agility when it comes to security, but that seems to make that agility for development also there. Do I understand that right? I think so too. And I think if you look across the fence to the commercial world too, you know, the developers and the operations guys are getting tighter and tighter with the DevOps theme, if, 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 if we're all familiar with that. You know, developers and operations now are making decisions together to get applications out and supported in production way quicker. Especially with the DevOps in the cloud. I know DHS, for example, Daniel, you guys have that the, the one data center where you have those yes. different services in the cloud. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back. We'll talk more about uh, app rationalization in the cloud. You're listening to the panel discussion, Moving Agency Applications to the Cloud with Platform as a Service, sponsored by Red Hat and Kerasoft on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.